right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are ready to drop some bombs today. Another episode of the Deliberate Dropout coming at you hot. Today's topic. This is a fun one. We all mess this one up. Hopefully some of you out there don't mess it up. And and if you, you're, you're not to this point yet, hopefully some of the, the things we talk about today, if you're listening, can help you avoid some of the same mistakes we made. Lucho, I want to set it up for you to come out swinging on this one. Today's topic is all about money. Um, mistakes we made as young adults uh, when we were first getting started, things we could have done better, wish we would have done better, um, better ways to manage your money as a young adult, and just general advice on that topic. I want to kick it off, throw out some some mistakes. I know I've got a laundry <laughs> list of things I did wrong. Um, start us off, and then we'll we'll take it from there. Abs- absolutely, man. I guess the first I guess the first thing that pops up. Like when I think of I just when I think of growing up in general, right? You like my first credit card I got in high school, I mismanaged the crap out of it. Like I just didn't understand certain principles. Like, like for example, never like never go over ten percent of a credit card budget. Like if you're less than ten percent of its budget, you're probably good with money management. I would max it out to five hundred overdraft. I would overdraft it. They would like penalize me with these fees because I'm going over my credit limit. That's the first thing that comes out to me. And even though it seems like a minute detail, right? Like not being able to even manage a simple $500 budget, it goes way beyond that. It goes about your integrity as a person. It goes about how do you handle, if you want to open up a business, how are you going to handle payroll? How are you going to handle like other aspects? Even if you want to buy a house, right? So being able to manage one simple card, I wish I knew like just certain principles about what to use it for, what not to use it for. And I probably would not have completely just effed up my credit that early. <laughs> yeah. What are, yeah. What are your thoughts? Dude, that's a, that's a, that's a huge one. I think a, a lot of people do make that mistake, especially if you're in college or you're a student. And if you don't have an income, I know that um, if you're in college in particular, you're going to get like hit by every credit card predator in the world. Like you got to get a student credit card, special interest, you know, no interest for 12, 24 months, like 0%, all these kind of like ridiculous offers, especially if you don't know anything about money, like you can get in a bind fast. Um, I, I didn't get my first credit card until I was in my mid twenties and, and making decent money. And, I grew up very debt averse. I grew up in a family that was uh, probably more toward Dave Ramsey than than like I am definitely than I am today. But but much more of like live within your means. Probably the only really big money principle that I feel like my my family just crushed it on in terms of like helping me educate me was like just avoid bad debt. If you can at least do that, Absolutely. like you're gonna be in a better scenario. And so. I, I, I delayed getting a credit card until I got out in the real world. And one of the things that I learned, um, both getting out in the real world and also as a, as a function of like starting to open credit cards as I got older is like managing monthly cash flow. And I don't even think like the average person even thinks about it like this, but your, your bank account, you're like a business, you know, you, you've got your operating account that you are running your life on and, and the money that hits your bank account is income and the things that go out are expenses. And this took me several years to, to get a handle on, but like sitting down and mapping out, hey, here are all the things that are going to hit my bank account every month. And here's when they're going to hit. And here's how much. And just having an idea of what was actually happening instead of just completely operating blind. I know that I I stopped having a lot of those stupid fees, you know, like the overdraft fees or the, uh, you know, like maxing out your credit card or um I know at one time when I was young, like the water, uh, when I was in like my early twenties, the water at our apartment got shut off because I thought that something was being paid and it wasn't. And, you know, I, I, so there were, there are a lot of those mistakes. And I think that a lot of it comes from not having any idea of what's going on and just kind of like running your, your personal financial life in the dark. Like if you don't know what's coming in and what's going out and when, like you are, you are set, setting yourself up for disaster. For sure. And I think one one thing that one thing that sticks out to me, right? At least in my experience, like early on in your career, you don't even make 
you, you obviously if you're entry level and like when I first started working, like I was not, I wasn't making much, maybe like 20, <laughs> yeah. 30,000 like yeah. a year. Right. Yeah. And I think that's applicable to mention because mm-hmm. I feel like the elephant in the room when it comes to credit cards or debt management is like, you're not even think these are all great applicable advices. I feel like the typical 18, 19 year old, they're so broke. And I don't want to phrase it like that, but like, there's like, they just want, I sure was. (laughs) I was, I know me too. Like I was a butt, like I was not in a good place. I just, you just want more money. Like you just want to be able to like not have to worry about the next paycheck. How can you make that transition? I guess. And where this falls in with credit cards is maybe that's one reason why you're just escapist habits. I'm just going to bad that bad that escape, 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 buy me this, buy me this, buy me that. And I think the, the root issue may be just not making enough money, dude. You're just so unhappy and you don't want to just, you know, like you don't want to look in the mirror. Sometimes the pain is so unbearable. It's like what Sigmund Freud said. I don't know if this was verbatim, but like when the pain is so unbearable, you're just, your mind just, it just escapes, whether mm-hmm. it's alcohol, whether Shut it's down. buying, whether it's buying random crap that you don't need. And I think I fell into that cycle early on is because I want more money. I don't, I didn't feel competent that early and I would just run that freaking thing up. And I'm being this vulnerable with you because what would you tell somebody when they're that young and try to give them like, yo, it's going to be okay, man. Like, this is what you need to do. Yeah. Well, I know. So, I I mean, I made so many mistakes and I I lived paycheck to paycheck for way longer than I'd like to admit. You know, when I was in my early, early 20s, it wasn't until I got in my mid to late 20s where I was like, I got to do something different. Like if I want to be able to do the things that I want to do, I need to like get, get on top of this. So like, this wasn't like I was perfect at 18. And and I think that part of this, if you aren't raised in a family where you're taught all of the like higher leverage principles about money, then you almost have, you're almost like you're in a situation where you're probably going to go out, you're set up to go out and make a lot of mistakes and and you have to flirt with that pain before you even feel the motivation to go do something different. So one of the things early on, this was a big shift for me. I remember I was working one summer in between um, college semesters and I was making decent money. It's like, you know, 15, 20 bucks an hour um, and, you know, getting paid like every Friday, you know, hourly work. And I remember it'd be like, man, I got to couple thousand dollars in my bank account. And it was always about like, oh my gosh, all the things I can go do right now. It was like, this is, these are my fun coupons. Like I can go afford, I can go consume this much. I can go buy new clothes. I can go, you know, out with my friends. I can go do all these things. And it was, it was this money was a means to increase consumption in the short term. Bingo. Yep. And it took a long time for me to to start realizing it's like, if I consume everything now, my ability to say yes to opportunities I don't even know about is, is like almost zero because I haven't, I haven't set anything aside. Like I'm always limited to whatever's in my bank account from the the most recent couple of paychecks. And there's no sort of like opportunity fund that I've built for the future and things that I don't even know about. And that that became more frustrating for me as I got out of college and, you know, into my, my mid twenties, you know, where, where it was like, no, I can't go do that. I can't go do that thing. Um, you know, I could go put this trip on a, on a credit card if I want, but I, I definitely don't want to do that. Cause then I got to pay that back. But I know that, um, in college it was, it was very, very, um, I didn't feel good inside. Like there were, there would be friends of mine who, whose parents gave them ridiculous budgets and they could, they could just like go on these ridiculous spring breaks. They could go spend several hundred dollars at the bar. They could go, um, on, on, you know, several thousand dollar week trips and like, go do all these things. And part of me was like, you feel like you're missing out. Mm. And, and, but, but at the same time, it was like, I just can't even fathom spending money on those kind of things, let alone having the money to spend on those kind of things, because it, it's outside of like the frugal sort of poverty mindset that I had at the time. And so 
um, as I got out into the real world and started earning money, it was like, how can I put myself in a position where I can say yes to opportunities if I want them? Even if it's, even if like, you know, I don't, I don't want to have that kind of standard of living. I don't want to be spending on lavish things just to do it. But like, how can I put myself in a position where if that's what I want to do, I can say yes to it. And that's a hard mindset shift to break from like, I can't afford it to like, how can I? That su- super hard, super freaking hard. And I, it doesn't get as much attention as it should. And maybe it's just, maybe just a mindset shift, right? Like maybe just like, like maybe it's just the difference. I know there's a quote, like nations are born stoic and they die Epicurean, right? Maybe just like, we're the complete opposite right now with social media and Facebook and all this crap, like instant gratification. Like we're more Envy. Epicurean. We're, we're more Epicurean now than we are stoic. And it's not to say that that's a bad thing. It's to say that like, as the quote mentions, like, you know, tough times, they produce great leaders, great times produce weak leaders. And I think it even, there's, there's so many factors that you could boil down to this, but maybe it's just a simple like mindset shift from instant to delay that gratification that doesn't get talked about enough. Yeah. So another, another, this is way, I don't even like calling things hacks, but like this, this was a simple, um, Switch. Simple, small change, very tangible change that I made um, yeah. that 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 had a big impact on me, especially when I was like still not making, you know, very much money, still making peanuts, if you will. So I started thinking about the things that I wanted to spend money on that were setting me up for future success. So like books and courses and uh, conferences or um software subscriptions or tools or th- things that were like investments in me. I started thinking about those as investments instead of expenses. So that was one. So it's like, I'm not That's spending this point. money just so it can disappear. Like I'm spending this money to help level myself up so that in the future, um, you know, I'm going to get an ROI from this and I may not be able to see it in my bank account now. And I, <laughs> and I may not be able to like immediately quantify, Hey, this, this book, led to this. But if I keep doing these types of things, then in the future, I've got to believe that I'm going to be in a better position to make more money, to to have higher leverage in my career. So that's one thing. An even simpler, more tangible thing was I set a threshold where I was like, below this threshold, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here in like teetotal. And that started out probably at like 50. I, right. Even now, like I make, you know, more money than I did when I was 21, but it's still like kind of a hundred dollar threshold. It's like if, you know, especially when it comes to books, like I, if I want to buy a book, I just buy the book. Even if I know I can't read it right now, just just buy the book because I know I'm going to, if I get one useful idea out of a $20 book, like that's going to come back tenfold at least, Mm -hmm. but trying to figure out a threshold that works for your budget where it's like, this is my guilt, guilt guilt-free spend threshold. And that doesn't mean like, you can go hit that every single day. Like that's stupid, you know, but, but you've got to, you've got to figure out the dimensions of your life. For me, it's like books, um, fine dining experiences and wine, because those are like, I love to cook. I love to learn about wine. Those are two areas in my life where I give myself more liberty to spend without feeling guilty. But then like, I'm super frugal with a ton of, ton of other things. Um, but I kind of set that limit where it's like, all right, below this, I'm not going to beat myself up. Like the difference between $14.99 and $12.99, like that $2 isn't going to save me a, a ton of money. But, you know, the trade off is I, I'm i not going and spending $7 on coffee every single day of the week. Like I, I make my coffee at home. Like you got to find the things that I think are important to you and then give yourself a little leeway to actually enjoy the fruits of your labor. Um and this is this is outside of like yeah good budgeting having a plan knowing what's sure. going on having a plan but like these little simple things I think sometimes people just they swing all the way to like I want to be completely authoritarian in my life I want to teetotal every single penny and this thing you already hate doing which is like managing your money uh, budgeting spending time in a spreadsheet you've now terrorized yourself even more over it by like making it something that that makes you feel dead inside by like 
beating yourself up over a, a five dollar latte if that's the area you want to splurge like you've got to give yourself some grace in the areas that you're you're going to actually enjoy the fruits of your labor Get guilt-free spending right you can't i i think i had that problem like because i was in such a like scarcity mindset grown like early yeah. on in my career it's like just calculating every little freaking thing right that's an that's an amazing point another thing that comes to mind is I guess like what, like investing in the books, right? That was a great point. Like that is literally like that. There should, ideally there should never be a cap on that, right? (laughs) Yeah. But like, for example, doing that is way more effective than like, let's say you're like a 19, 20 year old kid and you want that like Louis V belt. What is making you feel so empty that you need that belt? Like, that's almost how I look at it. Like, because yeah. I know that was something I'm not speaking like down. On it. Like, I know for me, I, I had some sort of empty, emptiness within me where at that point I just didn't feel competent and I'm just flexing. Yeah. And I think it's important that if you realize that, like, if you realize these triggers and you realize that, like, just buy literally books have changed my life. Mm-hmm. That's an asset almost. And if you could yeah. distinguish assets, liabilities with equity in a very, like in a microcosm sort of sense, not really like tan- like real estate or stocks, but yeah. for your personal like well being and growth, like pff, dude, sky's the limit. What what would you say are three action items that like a a young a young adult can do? Like we're talking to like high school Mitchell or high school Lou or you know anybody in college starting out. What are three things they could do to kind of help them with that transition of managing their budgets? Yeah. So several tangible things. Number one, I would say set a, set a very simple goal. This is where I love Dave Ramsey's stuff so much. He's got his like seven baby steps. And number one is, is set aside a $1,000 like emergency fund. This is your foundation. First of all, if you've never saved money and you've just been living paycheck to paycheck, that's going to be a tough goal, especially if you're a teenager and you like, you know, you, you have limited time that you're working anyway and you're not making a lot of money, like getting to a thousand bucks, that's going to be tough. You're going to feel awesome when you do that. Don't go spend it. Like don't go get bottle service or something. You're (laughs) hopefully, you know, you're a teenager. You can't do that anyway, but like, yeah, put that somewhere, protect yourself from yourself. Like go, go open a high interest savings account. And when I say high interest today, like that's like 0.001, you know, like do some, do something where you can't just like swipe your debit card and eat into those funds, open an actual separate savings account. Um, so that's, that's the first one is, is separate that savings account and, and save a thousand bucks. Number two, you don't have to spend hours in a spreadsheet, but like sit down and figure out what's coming in and what's going out on a monthly basis. And if you can take it to the next level, figure out how much of that is like, these are my fixed expenses. You know, if you're living on your own, it's rent, your utilities, and those will vary a little bit, your your groceries, like your cost to survive on a monthly basis. Maybe it's it's maybe it's fuel um, or a car payment or car insurance. If you you know you you have a car payment and you know you need a work a, a car in order to get to and from work, like. Those things that you actually have to have in order to continue to exist and continue to earn an income. And then like how much of your monthly expenses right now are just like disappearing on stupid things that are not like mandatory expenses because that's your opportunity to reduce expenses is the things that are not like you need to survive on. So like save a thousand bucks. Get a handle on what's coming in and and going out and and identify where you can kind of be a little bit more efficient. And then number three, like come up with a plan to level up. That could be I'm gonna I'm gonna read one book, you know, every month. I'm gonna go and try and like meet one person in a field or industry that I'm interested in and like take them to lunch. I'm gonna spend twenty, you know, thirty bucks to take them to lunch so I can like they can pour out wisdom into me. I can ask them questions. I'm going to figure out how I can continue to do a good job, you know, in my day job so that, you know, even if I can get a 50 cent per hour raise like that, I don't know what the wages are today, but like, I know that I think I got like my first hourly wage. It was like from like 
five fifteen an hour to like five seventy five, and I was like, man, that's incredible. I think the minimum wage is like three or four times that in some places now, but but still, like, how can you increase you know the the value that you're capturing where you're at by being more valuable? Because that's that's going to um, that's going to set you up for long term success if you can begin to to think about your inputs and and the outputs in terms of like value I'm creating versus value I'm actually capturing instead of just like, you know, somebody's cheating me. I'm working this many hours. I deserve more pay. Think about it in terms of the the mutual exchange of value. So those three things, number one, save a thousand bucks. Number two, do even the simplest version of budgeting, like just to figure out what's coming in, um, going out. And number three is like, come up with a plan to to become more valuable in the future for sure for sure closing thoughts for me i guess like i would i would i would add to level like step three the first two is like let me just figure out what the hell is going on like minimal viable product how much money coming in coming out number three that's ultimately what is gonna set you like so you're not as frugal right yeah like what do you want to do what like what like what profession do you want to do how much do you see like what is the income potential on that right and that's i feel like that's almost like a lifelong journey you cannot and we have plenty of episodes to hone in on that but that is what will truly even set you free from the sh- from some of the early mistakes you can make with with credit cards or any other um budgeting or finance tips <clears throat> yeah for sure awesome Great topic for those out there listening. If you're on if you're on YouTube watching, leave us a comment below. Smash the like or subscribe button. Um, you listen on any other podcast player. Leave us a five star review. Um, hit us in the comments if you have any questions, future topic suggestions, and we'll be back again soon with another episode of the Deliberate Dropout.